With no doubt, comedians are important. But who are we kidding? Lenny was more of a Martin Luther King than a Louis C.K. I know I just made some people's blood boil there, shouting, what gives me the audacity to homogenize a man who used the N-word so much it will make Massa say, hey, take it easy, to the MLK, but more on that later. For now, let's witness how those who were stripped of their voice are the ones who birth the loudest voice of present-day America. But they want us to believe this bullshit! Comedy Kings, Comedy Kings Network. Network. In 1941, at just the age of 16, Lenny enrolled in the U.S. Navy. However, Bruce is no David Goggins. He's a performer, an artist, and at this early age, his polarity with authority began to protrude. It wouldn't take long for Lenny to start doing performances for his seamen, and he would do this while dressed in drag. This sparked contempt in his commanding officer, leading Bruce to being dishonorably discharged under the assumption that he was experiencing homosexual urges. The designation was later changed to under honorable conditions, which wouldn't be the last time that Lenny's conviction got overturned. So how does Bruce move from dressing as a drag queen to becoming the most offensive man in the world? How does Leonard Alfred Schneider become the famous or infamous Lenny Bruce? It feels quite unfitting when you find out that earlier, Lenny was an epitome of the good old clean-cut American comedian. He did what Mijedberg would call banana jokes. This had him going for some time, but soon business started to be tough. Then, in 1954, Bruce started to work at strip clubs where he would introduce strippers and also do his own act. It was at this time where he met a less censored audience that he became, as Albert Godman puts it in his book, precisely at the moment when he sank to the bottom of the barrel and started working the places that were the lowest of the low, that he suddenly broke free of all restraints and inhibitions and disabilities that formerly had kept him just mediocre. His unprecedented style started to gain him shows and gigs to a point where he landed a feature on the first episode of Hugh Hefner's Playboy's Penthouse TV show in 1959. Hugh Hefner and his Playboy magazine were in all kinds of controversy. However, controversy is the business that Lenny was in. Lenny delivered an act so memorable that it was reenacted frame by frame on a modern TV show, but more on that later. Anyway, it seems like Lenny had realized that you are only remembered for the rules that you break. It's great. One night I had him on with <laughs> Lenny Bruce one day. Lenny Bruce and Don Rickles? Well, this was an hour. That, Lenny uh, was yeah. one of my favorites. There was no one like Lenny. Right. You would have loved Lenny Bruce. I would have? Because he was ahead of his time. Yeah. He broke rules that now everybody does. I mean, Lenny predicted this. They'd be nude on the Broadway stage. They'd be cursing on television like you would do. I don't curse on television. <laughs> With that said, isn't it true that your freedom to wave your hand ends exactly where my face begins? Which brings us to the controversial use of the N-word by Bruce. Openly, Bruce said, the use of the N-word will bear no meaning. It will lose its weight if it was openly and frequently repeated. And if you're wondering, of course he didn't call it the n-word anyway as a historian i know that there is a reason why the doctor seeks your medical history first before anything should lenny had opened the history books he would have realized that the comedy industry itself in america was catalyzed by the so-called menstrual shows which portrayed black people in the utmost negative stereotypes thereby influencing jim crow laws with that said it doesn't mean that there isn't some truth to what lenny said however that story deserves a video of its own. Speaking of hard words, cancel culture is a modern term, but the act of canceling dates back to the beginning of civilization itself. So you might be asking, what's the big deal with this censorship thing? I don't know, but somebody thought it was so important that they wrote this thing called the First Amendment. Lenny was literally cancelled from society, placed behind bars just for his words. It began in 1961 when Lenny performed in San Francisco and said the word cocksucker. Elaborating, he proceeded, true is a preposition, come is a verb, and that the sexual context of come is so common that it bears no weight, and if someone hearing it becomes upset, he probably can't come. The bust. What I got arrested for in San Francisco. San Francisco, I got arrested for, uh, what do you think? We can hear that, Daddy. Um, I'm not going to repeat the word because I want to finish the gig here tonight. It's, uh, uh, they said it was 
is vernacular for a favorite homosexual practice, a ten-letter word. Uh, it's really chic. There's two four-letter words and a preposition. <laughs> I can't... Uh, I wish I could tell you the word. It um, starts with a C. Well, you know what the word is. Now, it's weird how they manifested that word as homosexual. Because I don't. That relates to any contemporary chick I know or would know or would love or would marry, you know. The most significant Lenny Bruce arrest sounds like a crazy Hollywood scene, and to top it off, it was told by THE George Carlin. In 1964, where Lenny could barely perform anywhere, due to the fact that in any state he entered, the police would start investigating his next move in order to get him and the comedy club in trouble. On this night, the cops took it upon themselves to execute an undercover operation. They posed as audience members and diligently listened to Lenny's beat. And when they thought they had heard what they were looking for, one officer stood up and said the good old cliche, all right, all right, show's over here, and took Lenny to the station wagon. Carlin was in the audience that same night, and when the cops started to demand people's IDs, defiantly, Carlin said he doesn't believe in IDs. The officer drank with authority, grabbed him by his pants, and dragged him to the backseat of the cruiser with Lenny Bruce. Which hints why, in Carlin's obituary by the New York Times, they deemed Carlin as an heir of Lenny Bruce, who gave voice indigent counterculture and assaulted the barricades on behalf of the generations of comics that followed him. Moving on, documentaries are surely important, but who are we kidding? Almost every celebrity gets one, which makes them bear no weight. However, only a handful are honored with a biographical film. Elvis, Lincoln, Oppenheimer, just to sample a few. Not only did the actor portraying Lenny Bruce win an Emmy, he also got more time on the big screen than those who portrayed the names above. In the show, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Luke Kirby reenacted frame by frame Lenny's most prominent performances, including his appearance in Hugh Hefner's Playboy penthouse TV show that we mentioned earlier. Precisely, Bruce's character appeared as a supporting character for the main character, Miriam Maisel, a female comedian who wants to make a breakthrough in the male-dominated stand-up comedy industry during the late 50s. Uh, I, for years, I lived on Lenny Bruce and sent me a show. Uh, you're right, they're wrong. And then one night I'm sitting with George Carlin, and he's saying, you know, Lenny loved me. Because we all, that, yeah. every, everybody was about Lenny loving you. In contrast to stand-up comedians like Mitchell, Beck, Bilix, and George Carlin, there's little to no evidence that Bruce used drugs to come up with his material or temper his performances. However, his death says otherwise. YouTube documentaries always say, the life and tragic end of so and so. However, Lenny's death was truly devastating. In 1966, with his final trial pending, overwhelmed by being cancelled, and at just the age of 40, Lenny was found dead in his own bathroom due to what officials deemed a morphine overdose. At such a young age, he joined the ranks of those who are truly appreciated after they have perished.